in my head I was like, she's gonna die on the floor. I could already prepare myself for her to die. I kind of thought, that sounds like a bomb. I felt myself get lifted up in the air and then like put back down. Like splats of blood in a lot of places. My finger was hanging off. People were like, oh, it's, it's a trauma bond. I just can't see there ever not being any triggers. It turned out that I was stood six foot away from the bomber. We've been together just over two years now. I was friends with her like two or three years before anything happened. I just remember seeing her and she was like dressed really cool. She was wearing a really weird Harley Quinn t-shirt. How many millimetres was like through a documentary and they basically want survivors. A suicide bomb attack in Manchester city centre at the Manchester Arena. 22 people were killed last night and more than 50 people were injured. I was 17 at the time of the attack. At the time, I was 14, so very young. I'd never been to a concert without my mum before Ariana. So this was like my first concert on my own. It was like this like big countdown and everyone was like dead excited. Everyone was like just dancing and singing and having a good night. You know the song One Last Time? It was genuinely my favourite song. It's not anymore. Yeah, I think if it came on the radio, I'd, I'd probably turn it off. We actually left before the last song, I think. We was coming through the foyer and um, we was getting ready to leave. And I remember I had my phone in my hand and I was with my friend and I was like getting ready to message my mum and be like, oh, the concert's finished. I actually like took a photo of my my, I like on Snapchat and I was like, oh, this has been like the best night of my life. As I was watching everyone leave, like I just like heard this like really like dirty like bang. I kind of thought, that sounds like a bomb. And do you know what, at 14, like who was thinking that? I felt myself get lifted up in the air and then like put back down. The first thing I thought was something really bad's happened. I didn't know what had happened, but I was like, something really bad has happened. We need to get out. I kind of went into like fight or flight. After that, there was just like silence. Everyone froze, like nobody moved after that. Like it went off, then everyone was just stopped. And then all of a sudden, everyone just ran again, sprinting everywhere, like jumping over people. I saw like everyone on the floor and everything, and that's when I was like, something really bad has happened. You know, it was like a, like splats of blood in a lot of places, which was, I was thinking like, what is going on? I went into like, right, get, my friend up off the floor and then she stopped running because she was losing a lot of blood and I was like give me your phone I need to call my mum. I took my friend's phone out of her pocket. I tried to open the phone and I was like oh like it won't open and then it wouldn't open because my finger was hanging off. It didn't hurt because I had so much adrenaline. I remember the staff came over to me I was like I just need to know just tell me if I'm going to lose my fingers. My sister was crying at the top of the stairs. My mum basically was like you just go. I got on a bench and I was like, mum, like screaming it at the top of my top of my lungs. And then as soon as I found her, like there wasn't any time to like hug or anything. She was like, right, we're going, we're going now. The whole time we were driving, there was just like police car after police car and like ambulance. It turned out that I was stood six foot away from the bomber. I was not very well for a long time. I didn't want to deal with it. I did struggle for a while after the bomb with like coming to terms with stuff. I felt very numb. I think the first time I actually properly processed everything was after I met Millie and like I realised what she went through. I met Caitlin through a documentary we did. I don't know what it was in me but something was like I really want to do this. And then after it had aired and went out, um, I watched it and I saw Millie and all these other girls that were doing the same thing as us. And I remember all the girls were getting on and like me and Caitlin just like got on straight away at first. I just remember seeing her and she was like dressed really cool. And I was just thinking, and I was like, I like, really like this girl. She hadn't actually seen the documentary, which was really nice because it meant that the day wasn't sp spent talking about any of that. Well, I think Caitlin's always fancied me. Not in a cocky way, but she has said it a lot. And I didn't even know that she was gay for quite a while. I was friends with her like two or three years before anything happened. I was like in a pretty like rubbish relationship. Caitlin was just like, oh, I would treat you better. And I was like, would you? And then that's when I just thought, oh, maybe she would. I was like implying it, like how I was trying to say to her, like, you can be treated better than this. And then on Valentine's Day, we was like, oh, should we meet up? And then I was like, before like you open your card, like I just need to tell you, like, I do actually really like, you know, I do actually really love you. Like, I feel like I've, 
you know, always like liked you. And, and then that's when she asked me to be a girlfriend. Who says they love you on a first date? And I was like going in to kiss her and like she kind of like, I didn't really know what happened. And then she kissed my eye and that was it. Um, yeah. At the beginning, like we struggled a bit with distance with uni because like obviously Caitlin's in Leeds and I'm in Salford. We FaceTime like every night or every other night. I find it hard sometimes when she's not physically close. You either trust them and you know it worked really well or you have like a doubt and then that's it. It's hard not being with Caitlin, but I feel it's important to enjoy your time on your own as well as not with your partner because you are your own person. Hiya. We usually just take it in turns, like I'll go to Caitlin's one weekend, she'll come to mine. We like going to the cinema a lot together because I do TV and radio and Caitlin does like photography. So we like watching films together. You make quite a good model. I think my sister's a good model as well. So it's quite easy for me to, you know, just take photos. When I watched the documentary for the first time and saw you in it, I struggled really bad with Survivor's Girl and I thought, you know, I wasn't injured. No. She looked like you. To have you talking about and saying how you um, feel similar, but you know, was injured, it kind of helped me see that like everyone feels things and everyone goes through it, like no matter how you've been affected by it, like if you've been affected, it's still okay. How you feel and your mental health is your own rather than, you know, you don't have to compare it to anyone else. The fact that we've both been through the bomb really helps us like understand each other. So if I'm having a bad day about it, Caitlin's the only really one who can understand, to be honest. Like, um, she can comfort me about the trial and stuff like that. Like, she's the only one who knows. Like, when I went to court about the inquest, she came with me and supported me. We had to go in suits and I had to watch Millie give evidence. I got to hear all of her experiences firsthand. And it isn't the kind of thing that we've ever sat down and spoke about before. I can't believe you've never seen this. Today we're at the Glade of Light in Manchester, which is a memorial for the victims of the Manchester terror attack. When I came on the anniversary, obviously it was a very emotional day, but like when I came here, it felt like peaceful. And I feel like everyone kind of around knows as well. Like yeah. no one's really like, you know, shouting or anything. No, or... It's, it does. It just feels like yeah. peaceful. In crowds and stuff like that, it helps that Caitlin, I don't have to say it to her, but she's automatically aware, like, I might feel a bit overwhelmed with the crowd. I think it really, really helps that we both um, kind of know what we've been through. Say if we were out in public and like, you get a little bit quiet, you know, it might be because there'd been an ambulance go past like really loud and you'd be a bit like, oh my God. This kind of like, just being there for each other, but like silently. She's very, um, good at knowing what stresses me out and knowing when I'm getting too overwhelmed. When the anniversary came around last year, I think it's a hard day anyway, so that is a, that's an example of where we're both struggling. I don't know if I ever won't find anything hard. There's always something that creeps up. I just can't see there ever not being any triggers. Now I'm graduating from uni, it's a bit more real of like when Caitlin graduates next year, like maybe we'll get a house together. I want to like take her on a really nice holiday and propose to her when I have the money. But, you know, don't be having, I'm not having that on a student loan. <laughs> what happened to us could have ruined our lives and we could have really let it affect us. We've made the most of a very bad situation. We've turned it into love.